G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and for today's video we'll be taking you through the server-side JavaScript for Rows Retrieve, the ability to return multiple rows from a data extension using a simple or complex filter. The Rows Retrieve function in server-side JavaScript is a little different to the Rows Lookup function. The Lookup function in server-side JavaScript and AmScript makes you process the row using a very specific lookup. You must provide a name value pair of the rows to look up. The retrieve function, however, in server-side JavaScript works a lot more similarly to the execute filter function in AmScript. That is the ability to return a series of rows based on a criteria, not just a name value pair. For example, in the rows retrieve documentation, we can see the first example is to return back all the rows where the age is greater than the value of 20. So using this simple filter, we can return back multiple rows based on an evaluation of each row. That's very different to the lookup rows functions in AmScript and server-side JavaScript. Now, the one key difference between the execute filter AmScript function and the rows retrieve server-side JavaScript function is the execute filter function in AmScript, you must have a data filter already created that filters a data extension with specific criteria. All you can then do is execute that filter on a cloud page or landing page or otherwise. Whereas the rows retrieve function allows you to specify the criteria of that filter condition, simple or complex, within your code. So you don't have to have pre-built that filter, which can be very, very useful. So let's now step through how this function works by copying the code and jumping into a marketing cloud content page. So jumping into our content builder, into my existing code dev platform content page, let's now start to have a look at this sample code. Now, once again, we are not gonna use all the sample code exactly as is. I don't have a birthday data extension, but I do have another data extension ready to go. This one's our add row DE, which we used to add some rows in our previous video. So first of all, we do need to get that external key. So once again, we'll copy the external key, jump into our page and use the external key as a data extension initialization code. And with this, again, for good naming convention, I'm going to use the add row DE as the name of that variable, just so I know what it is. Make sure I change it down here as well. Now, I'm not going to use a filter for now. So I'm going to comment this block out using slash slash for JavaScript to comment out that filter and not include a filter for now. I just want to retrieve those rows. Now, because we do have our core platform loaded, I can, of course, use my write function to write out the value of data. One thing is though, I can't write out an object. I can only write out strings. So this won't work. I'll have to stringify the function first to make sure it's a string value. So I've got my stringify of my data. That's my data from my retrieve function of all the rows in the add row DE with no filter, which I've initialized there, writing it out onto my page. So with that done, Let's save it and refresh it and see if it works as we expected. Go refresh and sure enough, here is a great big stringified text blob of all the rows in that data extension starting from angel 111 going through to random number 31. Let's make sure of that. From angel 111, yes, good. And then random number 31, perfect. That's all of our rows being printed out onto our cloud page. But how about we start to use that fancy filter function? Well, let's now reintroduce this filter criteria, take our value and put it back into the retrieve function. And now let's use this filter syntax. We have to provide these three ordinals, the property of a field name to look at, the operator to use for comparison purposes, and their value to compare with. Now I do have a numeric field ready to go. So in my data extension, I've got a field called number. So I can use that number field to compare these numbers. I can see these numbers are all between where we have seven's the lowest and one, one, one is the highest. So let's try and see if we can find all the rows with a value greater than 20. Good start. So number was our field name and we're going to filter where greater than 20. So only return the values or those rows, should I say, where the number field is greater than 20. How many should there be? Well, you can see there's one below 20, two below 20, three below 20. So from 13 rows, three are below 20, so only 10 should be returned. All right, let's try that out. So we have our function done. Let's go save, and now let's refresh our page, hopefully finding just 10, all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Looking good, returned all the rows where that value was greater than 20. 
So using the retrieve function returns all the rows with no filter. Using the simple filter returned where the number was greater than 20. Let's now try the complex filter example. So you can see here for the complex filter, we have a left and a right using an and statement between them. This means it has to be this and this being true for them to be returned. So let's copy a code and try it out. First thing we'll do is paste that code onto our site and then we can use this filter operand here. Let's grab that whole filter section and cut it and replace it with our existing filter section just like that. So now we have our whole brand new filter making sure we have our opening tags and closing tags all aligned. We don't need that bit now, perfect. So what are we gonna make for our filter? Well, we do need to use number. So when number is greater than 20, let's keep that one going. We can now use our logic operator. We could do an or, we'll keep it as and for now. So we'll say where the number is greater than 20 and what? Well, looking at our data, what about where the rand num value is in the text field? That way we actually exclude these first three records and just take these records being greater than 20. That one's easy. So where text is equal to our, uh, the random number. So we'll go back into our email and we can say where the text value is equal to rand. So what we should get is three being excluded because they were below 20 and three records being excluded because they are not uh, text equal to random number. So we should get seven rows returned. So let's try it out. We'll go save and let's refresh this filter. There we go, a few less records with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in total, looking good. So the rows retrieve function in server-side JavaScript is a beautifully dynamic and easy way to create your own complex filters to return data on a cloud page or inside your server-side JavaScript automation activities. Now, key thing to note is same as the execute filter function inside of AmpScript, this can't be used on emails or previews. It can only be used on a cloud page. Again, the benefit of the server-side JavaScript implementation is you can also do it inside of one of those script activities in Automation Studio. Again, this can be really useful for processing data that comes in from a data extension, saving it, using comparison statement to then retrieve the rows that you need. And I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to the rows retrieve function in server-side JavaScript. If you did enjoy the video and it helped you out, then please let me know in the comments below with a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.